to the member for Lyons. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. The government is creating the right environment for over two million small businesses across Australia. Since the coalition came to office, around a quarter of a million new jobs have been created. Company registrations reached a record high in 2014. Over 280,000 new businesses were established during 2013-14. 96 per cent of Australian businesses are small businesses. Four and a half million Australians are employed in small business. Small business provides $330 billion of our nation's economic output annually. The government is working to support jobs and small business. We have, since coming to government, repealed the carbon tax, repealed the mining tax, delivered three free trade agreements with China, Korea and Japan, announced $2.45 billion in annual red tape savings, established the $484 million Entrepreneurs' Infrastructure Program, created new employment opportunities through a $50 billion commitment to infrastructure, established a $6.8 billion Job Active Employment Services pack Package, delivered a comprehensive reform package for the vocational education training sector, introduced Restart, a wage subsidy to help Australians aged over 50 to find employment, established the Small Business and Family Enterprise Ombudsman, expanded tax concessions for employee share schemes, and we'll discuss that further, begun to introduce changes to crowd support crowdfunding, extended unfair contract term pr protections to small bidders. We've improved the balance between franchisors and franchisees. We've, got, we've done a root and branch review of the competition framework and we've improved government procurement policy for small business. We want to ensure Australia is one of the best places in the world to start and grow a business. The jobs and small business package announced in the budget delivers further measures that will energise enterprise and help Australians into jobs. Deputy Speaker, no one could describe this as a fad or a trend. Since coming to government, we have had a minister, in Minister Bilson, absolutely committed to this sector. Uh, the address today at the press, press club highlighted there the passion, the understanding, the depth of knowledge uh, that the minister has. Under Labor, there were five small business ministers, and Minister Bilson's contribution at the, tech, at the, at the press club today was, was a vote of confidence in the sector, and I encourage every small business uh, employer and every small business employee to, to, listen, to, that, to let, listen to that presentation today. The questions that were asked, answered by the minister, it really truly is something that uh, uh, will inspire and empower small businesses to know that their government is behind them. Because we are, we are committed to supporting innovation and creating the right conditions for Australian entrepreneurs. As part of that commitment, we plan to improve the taxation arrangements for employee share schemes. These changes have been designed to increase the international competitiveness of Australia's tax system and allow Australian businesses to attract and retain high-quality employees in a globally competitive labour market. They are part of an extensive package of initiatives to support and encourage small business in Australia, which are contained in this year's budget. Small business is the engine room of the Australian economy, which is why the government made it one of the cornerstones of this year's budget. 96 per cent of all Australia's businesses are small businesses, employing more than 4.5 million people and producing more than $330 billion of our country's economic output annually. I have received a huge amount of positive feedback in the $5.5 million package of jobs and small business package in the budget, the biggest small business package in the country's history. I could give examples of Jane Shaw at the Ingleside Bakery uh, in Evandale, uh, Keith Rice, who is a consultant to a number of agribusinesses around, uh, around Tasmania. They will be expanding their business. They will be looking to make capital purchases and take advantage of the $20,000 instant asset write-off. At the heart of the package are tax cuts for all small businesses with, with annual turnovers of under $2 million. The company tax rate for those incorporated businesses will be reduced by 1.5 per cent, digit points, points to 28.5 per cent, and for those businesses unincorporated, which is the majority, uh, they, will, they will have a discount on their accessible income. 
This will improve the cash flow of incorporated small businesses and increase their capacity to engage within the economy. Small businesses will be able to immediately deduct each and every asset costing less than $20,000 that they buy. Each and every asset uh, that they buy costing less than $20,000 from budget night uh, two weeks ago to the end of June 2017. And as part of that package, the employee share scheme changes have also been introduced to, to boost the performance of small businesses. In the past, shares or options were taxed when they were provided to the employee. This meant that there was no real way of determining their true values, which meant that employees were hit with a substantial tax liability, even though there was probably no means to generate the resources to pay for it at that time. Particularly that is true within start-up businesses. These amendments will mean that the tax on the options will be paid when there is an actual value on the options, in other words, when those options are exercised. Eligible start-up start companies will be able to issue shares or options to their employees at a small discount, with the discount generally exempt from upfront tax. It is an incentive. So the background to this, Deputy Speaker, was that in 2009 the former Federal Labor government made a number of changes in the way that employee share scheme arrangements were taxed. One of these changes meant that the discount component of share or options issued under an employee share scheme were taxed when the employee received those share or op shares or options. The changes that we bring forth forward today are intended to better align the interests of employers and employees and stimulate the growth of start-ups in Australia. Not only will these necessary changes be made with this amendment legislation, but the government will also develop standardised documentation that streamlines the setting up and maintenance of an employee share scheme, thus reducing red tape. This will also develop a safe harbour valuation method for unlisted shares. Deputy Speaker, small businesses grow into big businesses, and it is about encouraging that entrepreneurial spirit that exists within the small business sector and knowing that there is the confidence there and the support of uh, their government to see them succeed, including the Australian Tax Office has recently, recently completed its consultation on both of, the, both of the changes mentioned above. So who does this impact on? This will benefit employees of companies which offer, uh, sorry, employees of companies which offer such uh, share schemes. It will make employee share schemes more attractive, encourage, encouraging more businesses to offer these schemes to their employees. Employer, employers will also benefit from these amendments. Employee share schemes are a great way to bring the interests of employees and employers together. They are the single biggest asset that small business often has, and they want to keep good people. Research suggests, suggests and it makes only absolute sense, research suggests higher productivity in companies that offer these schemes. In terms of eligi ed eligibility for the start-up concession, an eligible start-up company is a company with an annual turnover of not more than $50 million, is unlisted and has been incorporated for less than 10 years. Shares must be provided at a discount of no greater than 15 per cent and options must be not in the money when issued. That is, the option must have a strike price that is either equal to or greater than the market value of the company's shares, effectively uh, buying of puts, if you like, uh, the right but not the obligation to exercise the underlying option at the nominated strike price. And without a tax deduction up front, they may or may not have a value. And that's the very point, that there was no incentive there uh, in start-up businesses that were offering uh, sh uh, shares or options that had, had that tax payable up front, let alone the cash flow implications. And there are no exclusions based on industry sectors. And that's really important. I think there's going to be great opportunities, I think, within the agribusiness sector particularly, uh, to, see, to, see, uh, to see innovation and uh, entrepreneurial skills released because of this policy. The government has targeted the start-up concession to unlisted companies because during consultations last year, stakeholders noted that unlisted companies had problems valuing their business and, and, and accessing capital. 
We have seen the current tax arrangements. We have seen the current tax arrangements effectively stop the provision of options through employee share schemes since the 2009 changes. We know small businesses sometimes lack the cash flow to pay for salaries, which allow them to compete internationally. Employee share schemes allow firms to be globally competitive by supplementing employees' salaries with the equity in the company that they work for. It is the ultimate incentive. It is the ultimate incentive and has a real impact and a positive impact on, on productivity, and with the ultimate reward being the success of the business because they are part owners in that business as, 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 as it stands to reason. They are a valuable tool for employees to attra attract and retain talented employees, often the very, very best asset that new start-up businesses had, have and, and small businesses more generally. Unfortunately, the potential of employee share schemes has not yet been realised in Australia. and We are missing out on the opportunities within, within the small business to expand this and to be competitive uh, internationally. We are not an island. Uh, Australia is increasingly competing with businesses in our region and also around, around the world. We want to do everything as a government we can to kick-start small business and give back as much control to the sector as possible because, because they know best how to do the business. They just need the tools to do it. It is about, as was seen in the budget, Deputy Speaker, allowing business to do with their money uh, what, what is going to be best for their businesses. And goodness knows, uh, we know that government uh, will never make choices as good as small businesses with, will as, about what is best for them. Indeed, as has been mentioned, there is still work to do, uh, but I, I, I reinforce the fact that small business is at the heart of this government. It is at the heart of uh, growing the economy. Uh, 90 per, 96 per cent of, uh, of Australian businesses are small businesses, and they know, those small businesses know that they have a government uh, that is right behind them and allowing them to get on with what they do best. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Um, I, uh Thank the member for Lyons.